Welcome to another video. It's Sunday again. What does that mean, Huey? Dad's getting back on the highway. Let's get into it. So again, got my carry-on. Sorry, my carry bag. Uh, that's all my clean clothes wrapped up in my towel so I don't have to take the washing basket. My food bag, I've got a couple packets of these. Sugar free as always. Frozen food this week is roast chicken and vegetables. Apricot chicken, I think. Roast beef. Roast beef, side. Another roast chicken and veg. And meat pasta again. All courtesy of my amazing wife. <laughs> but also this week, I brought home all my bedding. Just my pillows and my blanket. Again, I don't take covers. With me, it's just one extra thing to wash. And that bag there. Got my frying pan, dinner plate, my toiletries are in there as well. My billy, butane canisters. It's a bit messy in there, but I've got everything I need. So I won't go too in depth with all my gear this week. If you guys want to see that, it's in vlog number one, which I put up last Wednesday, I think. Um, I spent a bit more time explaining what I take and why I take it. But now I'm going to try and convince my two-year-old to load all my stuff in the car for me. Let's go. Now to get the door. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it's stuck on the door. Sorry, Sam. There we go. Let's go. What did you get there? Yeah. Is that a feather? Oh, come on, let's go. Come on. Do boy. Huh? Thank you very much. You did it. High five. Let's go. I know he looks five, but this bike's only two. He'll be carrying cans of beer for me soon. Come on, son. So this week I'm not doing my normal run. Usually on a Sunday, I load up either a road train or a B-double and take that direct to Melbourne. But this week I'm only taking a single straight down to Sydney. Uh, the trip should take me around 10 and a half hours with all my required rest breaks that I take. Anyway, I have to start the car for the family before they get in. It's 29 degrees, Australian problems, I reckon. And of course, before I leave home, wheelie bins have to go out. Like I said last week, even though I go to the opposite end of the country, it's still my job to do it. All right, let's hit the road. So I gotta find my truck and my trailer. So we're looking for trailer 163. I reckon my truck will be down the other end of the yard. And my truck is sitting not where I left it. Oh. That's trailer 183. Oh, 183. There's the big cab. And there's my trailer sitting there ready to go. Trailer 163. Alright. My little boy's going to have a play in the truck today. So the next clip will be of that. So I'm in the truck. And look who's in here with me. Say hello, my son. Now I'm going to try and spread all my gear out while he's in here. So I'm kind of in a rush to get going. My clothes, I kept my clothes in a towel just so I don't have to cart a washing basket around. I've got three drawers. I've got three drawers on the bunk here. So this one here in the middle, I put all my uniforms in. I just shove them in there, I don't bother folding them. This drawer here, it's all like spare pairs of socks and rain jacket. That one on the left there, I just put all my dirty clothes in so I don't have to sort through them during the week. Freezer. These fridges aren't all that good. Stay there, son. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Stay there. These fridges aren't all that good. So I have to put all my frozen stuff at the back of the fridge so it cools it right down. Then all my drinks will just sit at the front of the fridge and they won't freeze. Get over there. So all my meals. They'll go at the back of the fridge. And all my drinks will go at the front. These, I usually get big cans of drink, but these are on special. 
So that and they were cheap, so we got those. So this is what the fridge looks like. I'll leave that cloth in there because it it freezes and defrosts constantly. And that cloth just soaks up all the water. All my meals go to the back. My fridge is set to freeze. I leave all my bottled water in here, so I'll chuck a few of those in there as well. And that's it. All my gear's organized. Now all I've got to do is go fill up the truck, grab my trailer, make sure I got all my paperwork, and go to Sydney. Why do you guys want me to get more footage of filling out the truck? But as I'm standing here, my GoPro is about to die, so I do apologize, mate. But anyway, now comes the hard part of trying to get the bloke out of the bloody truck. It's time for Dad to go to work, mate. What do you reckon? Ready? Oh. All right. Dad's got to go to work now. Dad's got to go driving now. Dad'll see you when he comes back in the truck. I'm gonna say bye. Oh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> trips come back in complete my paperwork and then hit the road to Sydney yeah, all good. sorry it's a bit noisy got enough fuel to get me down there that's for the fridge motor I took that airbag switch is pulled out thirteen ton over the triaxles is pretty good means I'll have a fast trip down there it's actually funny I haven't towed a single for about a month so not having to hook one or two or three trailers up to each other feels pretty good. But I've just noticed this. It's a big den in the bloody license plate. I don't think it was me that done that. I think the truck got used for a changeover or, or an Inverell run on the weekend. And I think a kangaroo might have went head first into the license plate and it's bent it right in. That's right, we'll get that replaced. All right, that's all done. My next stop will be Ballina at the BP service center next to the highway there. I've got to stop there and clean my windshield, clean my mirrors and whatnot. And then after that, I'll get some shots going through Coffs Harbour. And then my, my last shot will be going into Sydney. See you guys in Bellin. Queensland New South Wales border. These roadworks here, they've been doing these for a while now, but they're slowly getting there. They're, they're widening this whole section, but it's a nice evening for a drive. That beeping there, it's a proximity sensor. It's a part of the lane departure system that we have on these trucks. So when I get under two seconds away from that car at whatever speed I'm going, it starts beeping at me and telling me, basically telling me to back off. That monument there is the New South Wales Queensland border. Now we're in New South Wales. So one of you guys wanted me to talk about the process and what you need to go through to get your MC license. So when you go from an MR license, which is a medium duty rigid, from what I remember you have to go to your HC, which is a heavy combination here in Australia. And the HC only lets you tow one trailer, and then you can go to your MC after a certain amount of time, obviously on each license. But if you start off on your HR like I did, because you can go straight from a car license to a heavy rigid, which is usually a tandem axle drive rigid, after 18 months from what I remember, you can go straight to your MC, which is multi-combination, which is B-doubles, um, road trains, it's basically towing more than one trailer. 
and obviously depending on each person you can go for your MC open which is your manual I went for my MC open just so I could tow road trains most mobs require you to have your MC open and do road trains it's not a complicated process it is a bit nerve-wracking when you go straight from ridges to towing B doubles in a couple weeks when I got my license I talked about it in the first vlog about why I got my license but when I got it it was when I found out about the driver shortage it was a consequence of the pandemic and truck drivers not wanting to get immunized which is fair but it created a driver shortage of around 30,000 trucks sitting still and no one to drive them so when I heard about that and when my boss and my old job was making me do all these K's in a rigid that's when I decided to get my MC license so I got my MC license on the Saturday I called my boss now I cold called him and I, I saw the ad on the internet and I thought uh, instead of just putting my resume into an application pool I'll, I'll call the company I talked to my now boss he basically told me come in on Wednesday for an interview he was based in Melbourne so I met another bloke up here in Brisbane so I went in for an interview gave them all my details they told me to come back on Friday to go for a test drive and I didn't know for the life of me on how to drive a manual made me hook up an old 104 manual to a loaded double and I went about a K up the road and turned around and come back with someone in the passenger seat he obviously knew that I was brand new so he gave me some grace in terms of driving the gearbox but he said no you've done it safely and all that little did I know they already had sorted out a truck for me he walked me over to the other side of the yard and said this is your truck come back Monday night we'll send you a text message come back on Monday night and we'll send you down the highway I left the truck come back with all my gear no experience in line haul no experience driving a manual and off I went crunched every gear for about two weeks and then I learned how to drive it properly and after that I was away they told me they weren't going to give me B-doubles for a while but um, I think it was my third or fourth run they called me and said look we need you to do a double you do it on a changeover so I went from Brisbane down to Port Macquarie grabbed this B-double dragged it back up to Brisbane no sweat it was nerve-wracking but if you kind of stick to the general rule of taking every corner wide when you've got a B-double or a road train you won't run into any dramas it's just the rule that I'm sure all of us follow and it works when it comes to road trains I think it was two months in two and a half months in I didn't even know at that time that we done road trains. A couple months in, the boys in operations called me and said, we think you'd be alright to do a road train. Here's what you do. Hook it up and go from Brisbane to Melbourne. And that was a lot different than doing a B-double. Purely because of the added length and the fact that I had only had about two months experience with B-doubles and then going on to road trains and not really being told how to hook them up properly and everything, but just figuring it out on my own and then calling the boys in the office and asking them this and that. I got it done and then I was away from there. Basically after you do your first three or four road train trips you get a lot of confidence in it. It's, um, it's, it's really nerve wracking. No one told me at the start not to look at my mirrors because with the road trains that we tow, which are A double combinations, the dog trailer on top of the dolly, it flies around the road. You can hold it as straight as you possibly can but it's still going to fly around even on a flat surface. I'm not going to say it's impossible to keep them straight but it's it's pretty hard to keep them straight even on a good road basically after that learned most of the things that there was to learn about the job that we do and the specific runs that we do and all that kind of stuff but anyway i'm still going to pull over at ballina clean my mirrors get my windshield a bit of a clean although it's one of the locals done it for me i think i'll see you guys down there so i'm just coming up on the ballina exit to go to the service center it's not this ballina exit here it's the next one the last lot of floods happened out here and through they come through Lismore they all come down through here as well all over to the left here this all floods and this little dip in the highway before you go up here past these cameras this was all underwater everyone was stuck out here at the service center for bloody for hours I think I was I got lucky I was only there for six or seven hours before they let all the trucks through the cars still didn't get through so these cameras here, these are all average speed cameras. So if you go from point A to point B too fast, it'll come up in the system and you get done for it. So I'm gonna take this exit here and the service center is just over this side of the road there. I think there's around There'd easily be 60 or 70 truck parks in here. Turns into a bit of a truck show sometimes. Alright. 
So what I'm going to do now is grab one of these sets of stairs here, clean the windshield off, clean my mirrors, and then I'll be on the road again. These are usually empty, so I've got to find some water. all done. I clean my blind spot mirror here too. These mirrors are awesome because they get rid of the blind spot along this side of the truck. Really the only blind spot that we have in these K200s is right here. Mainly because I sit behind the steering wheel instead of above it and I can't see anything if it's right in front of me there. So I just have to look over the dash a little bit to have a look. Be careful I don't run old mate air over. best part about towing singles is how fast you can get up to speed. Obviously a single trailer with 600 horsepower underneath me is pretty easy work for the truck. Before I get onto the highway I'm already doing 90 and I'm up to 100 now. So for anyone that doesn't know about these auto road ranges, is, um, it's an automated manual. If I put it there and drive it lets all the truck do the shifting. They're not very smart. They're not smart transmissions if you let them do it itself. So I always drive it a manual. Transmission's not very smart, either slowing down or picking up speed. When you're in auto and you've got the compression brakes on, the truck can't decide what gear to go down to, so I'll let it do it now. I'll put the brakes on a little bit. It's not changing down gears at all. It'll let the revs dive right out before it changes down gears. So I'll put it back in manual, click it down a couple gears, and get it going again. It works the same way picking up speed. The truck doesn't know what gear to be in. It'll rev the hell out of itself. It'll change up gears one too many and then it'll die in the ass. So that's why I don't drive this in auto, I drive it in manual. I'm just finishing a 15 minute break here in Heatherbray. Uh, Heatherbray's around two hours away from Sydney to where we go in Sydney. Uh, I left Ballina, I left there around uh, five hours and three quarters ago. Between this area and Sydney there's not much to film, but I will leave the headgear attached to the camera so I can put it on going through the North Connects tunnel and get some noise going. With the quiet engine brakes that I've got on this truck, it's probably the only fun I get to have with the engine brakes going through the North Connects. So I'll see you guys then. I'm just coming around the corner to the North Connects tunnel. So from where that last clip was, I'm about an hour and a half from there. And from the other end of this North Connects tunnel, I'm around another half an hour. So almost there. Jake Brake's pretty disappointing. But anyway, I'm gonna switch it off. And I'll see you guys when I park up at the depot. So that's the end of my first run for the week. Brisbane to Sydney. All the trucks you just saw, most of them are empty. There's only a few of us that would have come in tonight. Uh, most of the line haul drivers start Mondays, so there's only a few of us that start Sundays. I've handed in all my paperwork for payroll, so they get that, and I'll start a new run sheet tomorrow. We'll pick back up in the morning when I've had a sleep, and we'll see what tomorrow holds for us. Cheers. So I've finished my seven hour break. I'm over here in Erskine Park, picking up the set of trailers here. Once I'm hooked up, I'm gonna drag them around to one of the big coal stores here load up and then i'm heading down to melbourne tonight it should be a good trip they're usually pretty good at loading this place so i'll talk to you guys soon so with this place here these locks over this side of the warehouse where those two hawk trailers are they allow for reversing of v doubles so i'm going to try and get some footage reversing on i'll see how i go i've got to go around the other side to the office 
talk to them, fill up some paperwork. Then after that, I'll come back around this side, reverse onto the dock. Boots. So here I need my phone, it's got my manifest on it and my pen so I can sign all the paperwork. Hopefully the next clip will be of me reversing this double onto the dock. Let's go. do it five times out of five but that sixth time when there's drivers sitting around in all these trucks watching you do it it's like you're brand new and you suck at reversing trailers but i'm gonna go inside help the boys load my trailers tell them how i want it loaded then i'll be back out hooking up and off to melbourne so i finished loading i apologize for not getting any footage of hooking back up but i was in a rush to get out of there what i do now fill out my run sheet i've done my con note and then send it down to Dermot. but my next stop will probably be wodonga We've got a depot there as well. That's on the New South Wales Victoria border. I'll stop there, chuck in some fuel if I need to. I might have a shower while I'm there, heat some food up, and send it down to Victoria. She's there. So I've just pulled in here to our Wadonga depot. Just waiting in line to fuel up. Old mate is just filling up his taxis going back to Brisbane. I'm gonna stop here for half an hour, 45 minutes. I've got plenty of time before the trailers have to be in Melbourne. So I'll stop here, I'm gonna grab a shower, heat some food up, I think, and then I'll get back on the road. I'm gonna chuck the headgear on and get some shots going through Wodonga and then down on the ring road. I'll see you guys there. This is the, this is the highway here. That way goes north. So we gotta go over the highway and through town and back out to go down south. That only takes about five minutes. So we can drag road trains through here as well. Same way we go with singles and doubles is the same way we go with road trains. It reminds me of a place like Toowoomba. It's kind of a big country town. arrived here in Melbourne the weather's pretty crappy which is good for us because we can sleep well in the trucks this will mark the end of another video thank you guys for all the support on the last few videos it's been awesome I've been enjoying um, I've been enjoying interacting with you guys in the comments and thank you for all the subscriptions and likes I really appreciate it it helps my content get to the top of the algorithm but the next video will be out on Friday I'm not sure what I'm gonna do tomorrow but I'll probably get back up to Sydney but I'll get that into the next video but until then, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.